Crenogs are Iron Age lake dwellings. There are a large number in Ireland, and Scotland has at least 350. So we constructed an example on Loch Tay shows. These were largely made of wood. Also, a certain amount of stone was used, particularly for the hearth. Crenogs were mainly places of refuge, and they were built between 800 BC and 200 AD. Stevenson Loch, or Ashgrove Loch, had anything up to six of them. It's also famous because it lies next to the King's Road that ran from Cowinning to Porton Cross, and it's said that the treasures of Cowinning Abbey, when it was being pillaged in Reformation, were hidden somewhere in the loch. Loch Brand, or Boghall Loch, lay close to Beeth, lay beneath the hill of Beeth Castle, not far from the Court Hill, it was at one time owned by the monks of Kilwinning Abbey. It was drained in around 1825 by a ditch dug through the natural dam, at which point a large number of, of wood posts became apparent, and this was the remains of the Cranog. Fiston Cranog lies near Stewarton. It's the best known in Ayrshire. It's been excavated twice. It used to be known as the Swan Now. It's thought to be some sort of artificial platform, possibly built by the Earl of Eggington, either for the swans to nest or for guests to shoot waterfowl. It was identified as a Cranog by Duncan McNaught, who was the local school teacher from Kilmores. He'd been present at the excavations of the Cranog at Loch Lee. Three dugout canoes were found and a number of relics. It probably was in use up until the time of the medieval kingdom of Strathclyde. Craigie Cranog lay close to the castle, slightly to the southwest in a hollow. Here were found a large number of stones together with some wood, and also the type of ore that may have been used with a log boat. A number of the Cranogs were approached by causeways. These seem to have been built so they were slightly below the level of the water, make it difficult for unwelcome visitors to get to the Cranach itself. In the 19th century, during the construction of a railway bridge close to Kewinning and between Bog Farm and Dubs, a large amount of wood was found. This has all remained of this small Cranog. Loch Fergus, near Colton, has a small island that was effectively used as a Cranog. It was later possibly the site of an abbey. The field beside is particularly famous because this is where King Fergus is said to have descended upon the troops of King Cole at night. He defeated them. King Cole escaped, only to be killed nearby. The island was once approached by a causeway running from the nearby shoreline. Most Cranogs were discovered when the locks were drained. However, at Coburnia Lock, the cairn, as it was known, was forced to the surface from the weight of the slag from the ironworks that was being dumped into the lock. This put pressure on the detritus at the bottom of the lock and fully forced the Cranog to the surface. A dugout canoe was found here, and rather oddly, a medieval wine vessel known as a ewer was found within it, shaped like a lion. Loch Lee, not far from Tar Bolton, home to Robert Burns from 1777 to 1784, had a Cranog. This was excavated. They had a causeway running to it. It caused a particular problem for Robert Burns' family, because it was supposed to have been fully drained by the landlord, David McClure, and it was the fact it wasn't resulted in a lot of litigation at great expense to William Burns, Robert Burns' father. Although defensive in nature, very few Cranog sites have revealed any weapons. The Cranogs themselves are very well built, showing considerable skill in the planning and execution of the work, particularly in the use of wood joints. Martinham Loch near Dalrymple is an obvious place for a Cranog. The old castle here, approached by a causeway, is very suggestive of a medieval structure replacing an original Cranog. 
Most cranogs, once discovered with drainage, have been lost to cultivation. However, in the case of Loch Spouts, a reservoir was constructed. The original cranog was discovered in the late 1870s. The excavations reveal the typical structure together with the canoe. Most cranogs were out of use for so long that the original purpose was completely forgotten. Often they're only identified by the fact there were some small trees growing on an islet without a body of water. Other possible uses of cranogs have been suggested, such as religious sites, or possibly as the main dwelling of tribal chiefs. Although never used as cranogs, there are a couple of examples of floating natural islands on Scottish locks. The one at Loman, for instance, was said to be strong enough to support grazing cattle. <laughs>